Hey folks, it's Frithgar here, how you doing? Welcome back to Farming Simulator 19 here in Boulder Canyon. We've got our tractor and trailer lined up over there, ready to roll. I have got several trees on the ground. I'm going to cut down a load more trees first before we start picking up some more. Um, just sort of head out through this side here and take out this little bunch that we've got right in front of us. And then I think we should be good to go with picking up a load or two and taking them up, selling them, making a pile of money, and hopefully getting a little bit closer towards our target of the ultimate tree felling beast. Now, some people did ask why I wasn't going for the John Deere mod. And so what I've done is I've actually installed the other tree harvester mods that are on the mod hub and got those so that we can just take a quick look at them. So the one that I'm after is the Scorpion King. And why am I not getting the Komatsu? Why am I going for that one? Because there's 5,000 difference in the price, and this one's got a longer reach. Uh, then you've got these two John Deere's over here. This one over here is 200, and that's 286 horsepower. This one's 268. So it's only a little bit less on the horsepower. I don't know what the reach is on the boom because it doesn't actually say what the reach is on the boom on them. It doesn't actually give you a distance for reach on them. So there is that one. I could go for it, but I've been saying all along that I want to go for the other one. And yeah, that one is a fair bit cheaper, actually, than the Scorpion. Uh, with the tracks I want to get, we're looking at 450,000. This one here with uh, track upgrades like this we could have any uh we're looking at 380,000 so it's 70,000 difference that is quite a significant amount this one over here is very close to the price of the others anyway we can have the the, the tracks on them like that 7,000 on that so we're looking at 430,000 so that's 20 grand difference not a big lot of difference on that uh, 20,000, yeah, it's, it, it is a load, a, a load of timber, and yeah, that, that would be nice, but it, I don't think it's a huge amount of difference. And then you've got the Komatsu 951 here, which, if you look at the two of them, it's pretty much almost a reskin. Oh, no. No, they, they are slightly different. They are slightly different. Um, but anyway, again, the price is so close, 435 there to 440, I just don't think it's worth it. I did get that one as well, just to take a quick look at it, uh, but honestly, I don't think it's worth getting that one. Um, I think it's just going to take too long. So you've got standard design, you've got grid protection. Um, so no, I, I didn't really want to get that one. But that's the options for the harvesters, so really the only harvester that i would want to seriously consider would be this one if it's got similar properties to this one over here however i'm curious what it would be like i mean yeah you do have a self-leveling cab on there the cab is separate to this one i don't know that it would be as maneuverable with the boom as what the Ponzi Scorpion is. So the way that the boom works and everything with the Ponzi Scorpion, it just seems like you've got better reach. I found that with this Komatsu over here, this one seemed to have a better reach um, and just slightly able to access the trees and stuff a little bit better than that one could. So that's why I went for that one. But anyway, I don't want to spend too long yapping about those because you're not going to be in particularly interested in that. So let's go down here and... Keep chopping a few trees. I mean, we got $340,000 right now. So we are doing fairly well as far as money is concerned. We're not too far away now from getting our ultimate target, which is to be able to actually get the Ponzi Scorpion. I want that one. I want that one back here. And I want that one working on the trees. Yes, it is kind of the, the top one uh, for all of the prices involved. Um, but there's a reason for that. It's generally considered to be... Ponzi are one of the best forestry companies in the world. They are one of the first companies to start producing specialized forestry machinery. Um, based in Finland, I think it is. Um, they are... They, they know all of the people that make those machines. They know all about forestry work. And there's some very old... Ponzi machines that have been around for a very long time that you can go and look at and it's 
is their stuff. And, and quite frankly, it, it's quite amazing. When they first started making them, they, they, they made some very impressive machines. And I don't know what else they've done. I, I haven't sort of looked into it too much, but I do know that they are... Um, widely considered by many to be among the best company in the world for producing specialized forestry equipment. So for that reason, I think we that's that's the one that I'd like to go for. I found in game, just just purely going on in game because I don't know very much about forestry in real life. So purely going on in game performance and how I've gotten on with the two different base game ones. I personally prefer the Ponzi one. I, I get on better with that one than I do with the Komatsu one. Um, the Komatsu one, it, well, it may have been changed now. It may have had a fix added to it or something. But I found that it wouldn't lower down as much. So if you were sort of at the top of a slope, something like that, you couldn't get it to work properly. It wouldn't sort of um, cut the trees properly properly. Uh, like lower down, you can get the boom to lower down as much, and that really did hold me back. And like I've said be several times before, the reach on them as well. The reach is just annoying. It's right; it, it just doesn't reach very far. Right, we take this one out over here, and uh, we've got four trees over there just to our left that we want to take out. And I think there's how many have we got? It's just the one there. It's just that one that I also want to take out. So we'll take this one here. Clean this one up nicely. Like that. If I can... Now, you've got to angle the chainsaw just right to be able to do your run up through here. Once you get it just right, you can do the run. And it works quite nicely. Look at that. There we go. Racing along there like that. Absolutely perfect. So I'll come back this side and do the, the chopping. Uh, if I can. There we go. Chop that one down through there. And how long is this? Yeah. I, it's sort of... Almost like we don't want to cut it into four pieces because they're going to be too short, but three pieces are going to be too long on some of these trees. It's sort of, they, they, all, they all seem to be just ever so slightly the wrong length. Not quite, there's something not quite right about them every time you go to them. I suspect that the scorpion will cut these and you'll get three and a half logs out of them. That's, that's what we'll end up with is three and a half logs all the way down. Still, at least they'll be the right length ones. Yeah, you get the, the, the bits on the top ends. They they um, they um don't get as much money. You, you get a little bit of a penalty for that. But it's better to have the top ends just slightly shorter and then have the rest of it on the perfect length logs. Because you lose the least amount of money by doing it like that. If you were to shorten the bottom end of it, you'd lose a much bigger chunk of money because you've got the thickest amount of timber and then you've suddenly shortened them. You don't really want to do that. Right, I'm going to take that one lone pine over there. It's not exactly lone, but um, it, it, it's it's lone enough. And then the ones just to my left, four of them right there, and then we're going to get our tractor. We'll load up. We'll sell some timber. We'll see how much we get. We may have two loads from this lot. We may even have a little bit more than that. And you never know, by tomorrow morning, we could actually have enough wool that we'd be able to load up, um, get our, well, not, not enough wool. We've got wool. Uh, we, could have enough, we could have a decent price for the wool. If we can get a decent price for the wool, I'd be very happy. I would like that. Very much like to have a decent price for the wool come through at some point soon. Okay, that one was not supposed to fall like that. I'm going a little bit further. Take you down. Over you go. Right, well, I'll go and tidy this one up a minute. There we go. And... Okay. Can't jump on. I was stuck on the end of the piece of timber. Wouldn't let me jump. Take that one off of there and clean that one. There we go. And that one I will just cut in half. It'll let me. There we go. Cut that one in half. Then come down here and clean this one. All the way down here. So I reckon that we've probably got 40 grand lying here on the ground, at least. Um, two loads. So rough, roughly 40,000, maybe a little bit more. And that will take us up to 380,000. Then we will be just about ready by that point to go and get some sleep. If we can sell wool in the morning and we can get an additional 
30 grand from selling some wool. That would be absolutely spectacularly, brilliantly wonderful. I'm going to go like that. It's difficult to, if, if you've got a log in the way, it's quite difficult to sort of line up with the tree. You end up sort of cutting it at the wrong angle. It, it does not work very well if you're on the wrong angle there. So get one through there. So yeah, we can get another 30 grand from selling wool. That would leave us with 410,000. So it would be two additional loads of timber to take and we would have enough. And I don't think we've got anything else we can sell. The only option that we would have in order to just hurry along that last little bit would be to sell a few sheep. And we have I know that we've earned quite a few sheep now. We're, we, well, by the morning, we will have 50 sheep. Um... I don't really want to go selling sheep at this early stage. I'd like to keep my sheep. But if we were to sell 10 sheep in order to speed things along and get an additional 10,000, I uh, don't think that would be too bad a thing. You know, that's, that's something that I think that we could actually cope with. Um, I, I don't want to make a habit of doing that because mostly I want to build up the numbers of sheep that I've got. You know, the more the merrier. That's what we're after, really. Now, we want to start this one up. So, we've got to remember that it starts on the left-hand side, doesn't it? So, we'll leave it loading on the left. I think it starts on the left-hand side. We'll leave it loading on the left-hand side. And we will do that right there to the time scale. So, you see, I've actually done the time scale thing properly. For once, I've actually done it. Now, is that little log right there going to load or is it not? It is. I didn't think that one would be big enough to actually load, but it turns out that it is. That does surprise me. It's good, especially now that I've got one the other side of it, because it means that we don't have to worry about it. And now going along the side of the hill, this is always the worst bit, because it doesn't ever quite load properly. It just dumps the timber onto one side of the trailer. And it doesn't always grab them all when you're going along the top of the pieces of timber either. It might do. Look, see, there's, there's one right there that's got left behind. And it does this. You go along and it, it sort of seems to leave half the bits behind. But I don't think... I think that's partly because of the angle of the trailer. I think that there's... Um, it's got like a, a set angle that you've got to be at when you're doing your loading and if you don't match that angle then it doesn't like pick the logs up properly it misses them all together it's like a flat plane the the area the aoe sort of bit that it's uh using to measure where the logs are and decide whether or not it's going to pick them up is on a flat plane rather than like a a, a big box or if it is a box it's a, a very narrow box and so it doesn't quite pick up everything. It leaves a load of them behind, which is rather frustrating sometimes. All right, we're not going to get very many more. I want to start. I want to head straight up the hill now. I think so that. And this is also rather tricky. Look at this. The weight that we've got in here now, and the fact that I'm trying to drag it over tree stumps <laughs> means that we're really, really struggling to get up this hill. And that means it's really, really going to struggle to actually load any more timber. I mean, it, it's getting there. We are loading. We've got, we've got a pretty substantial load on here already. I don't think we're going to want very many more pieces up there. Look at that. There we go. Now, okay, now, now, we're, getting, now we're getting a load. Now we're getting a load. I'm just curious if we're going to be able to get this up into the sawmill. You know, I'm thinking that's probably enough. I'll stop loading and I'll put the straps on like that. And which way am I going to go now? I think we, well, we need to kind of get up to the top and turn right. But it means keeping going. I haven't really got enough room to turn around inside that lot. Now, what we've got left is that actually another load. We can slow the time back down. I'm hoping that is at least one more load that we've got there. That'll keep us going a bit longer. Uh, I've also, in my calculations, forgot to take into account that every night that passes costs us 10 grand in animal costs and machinery, maintenance, and uh, our big hefty loan repayment that we've got to make as well. So 
We, we cannot forget that we are deeply in debt. Now, we want to come up beside the tree right here. Stop there. And I want to go all the way up over here. And the first thing I'm going to do is... I'm going to take that one off like that. And then I want to pick this one up. I'm going to try and put that one in on there. Like that, if I can. If it will let me. Right. We put that one up there. And then it should be held in place by that. I'm hoping that has held it in place. We will keep an eye on it. So there we go. We've, we've got our beautiful tree stuck out the side of this one. I'm sure it's not quite supposed to be like that. I'm, I'm absolutely certain that things are not supposed to be like that. But uh, there we go. That's, that's what we've got. So we'll take that one. We'll run that one up into the sawmill. I'm hoping that it will actually run up into the sawmill. And that there isn't any collision anywhere. I don't think there's any collision anywhere else. It's not normally. It's just... It's a strange tree. So there could be some strange things happening with it as well. And I, I really, really don't want it to, to do that. I don't want no strangery at all. I just want, like, just, just a, a, a simple, plain delivery. So we can make a big pile of cash on this. Well, also, once we've sold the load, we will just check the wool prices a minute and see if they've altered. I very, very much would like them to go up. We want them to go in the upwards direction. If they go up, I've got two full pallets of wool waiting back at the yard, ready to be sold. Now we got to get up this hill. And this is the bit that I'm a bit more concerned about. I don't know if we're going to be able to actually do it because... We have previously gotten stuck on this bit, slightly steeper than the slope that we have over the other side. There we go. Our tree coming up through and everything. <laughs> That's brilliant. I love the way that it goes through the walls, but I mean, at least we are able to travel up the hill. We have got that in our favour. Bring that one over. And it'll be one less tree that we've got to worry about on the map. So as long as that one can get all mashed up, that'll be good. Uh... Probably gone a little bit too far there. Take all of that off. And what do we got this time? 19... Seriously? Only 19,000? I thought I had more than that. 19,788... Uh, well, 21,000. 21,000 is not too bad. I don't mind 21,000. Right, what are we doing with wool prices today? How are we doing with that? See, all of these other prices... Oh wow! Oh, it's 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 gone up, right? We it's over a thousand right now. We have got to keep a close eye on that wool price. We will go and do some loading. We're selling wool tonight. We'll sell wool as soon as we are able to. Once that price has stopped rising, we will head back to the yard and we will sell wool. If it's over a thousand and still going up, that is absolutely fantastic. We've got. We do have at least two full pallets back there. This is actually really good news. I mean, ideally, we would have wanted it in the morning. But let's not complain about, you know, something that is the perfect gift. We won't complain too loud. It's, it's called looking a gift horse in the mouth. You don't, you don't want to go looking a gift horse in the mouth. It, it, it's very rude. And basically, what you do is when, when you... Um, you Apparently when you buy a horse, or well, certainly when you used to, you would open its mouth and you would have a look and see if its teeth came together. Because if its teeth didn't come together, then it wouldn't be able to crop the grass as tightly in the winter. And therefore, the horse wouldn't be quite as good and be more likely to starve. So you'd look the, you'd look the horse in the mouth before you bought it. But if you were given a horse, a gift horse, and you went and looked it in the mouth... Uh, that would be extremely rude. That's, that's an extremely rude thing to go and do. So hence the saying, don't look a gift horse in the mouth. You, you, you don't get a gift from somebody and then start inspecting it closely to make sure that it all matches up with everything that you want. All right, I did forget just on that first bit to start the 30 times speed thing. But I then did remember. So I, I feel that we're doing all right at the moment. I'm going to go up and down the hill because I feel it does actually load the trailer a little bit better doing it like that. Um, and it also seems to grab more of the logs. 
as well, which is equally important. We can actually pick up the timber. There we go. And I'll come round this way. I know that there's one up over there that I've missed. I'm hoping that we'll be able to go back and get that one. Uh, let me just quickly check here. Still going up. Wall's still going up. We're 1,053 right now. We can go until about half past seven, I think, before we've got to stop. Um, and then we go back to the five times speed and we'll sell the wool at like half past seven. If, well, as long as the price doesn't stabilize before. If the price stabilizes before then, we'll go and deal with it as soon as the price is stabilized. And then afterwards we can worry about other things. Right, so there is a huge, great big pile of timber on there. Which has gotten rather messy. So we will strap that down. And we'll leave that one log there. We'll leave that one behind. We won't worry about that one. I'm going to leave the 30 times speed going. Until I get over to the road. Because I didn't use it to start with. Um, but that load. I think we can safely say. That that load is fully loaded. Right. We, we, we've gotten a fair amount of timber on that load. I think we're doing alright with that. Bring you over to the road. And now we will slow down. So there, I think we've we've made the, the right sort of 1,075 still going up. Right. We will go over to the mill. We will sell this load. And then we will head back home. We can leave the trailer over this side, I think. Actually, no, we won't. We, we'll take the trailer back over there as well. We'll head back home. We will get the front loader on. And we can fast forward time until half past seven. If the price is still rising in another two hours' time at half past seven, I will sell the wool anyway. I will just sell whatever wool we've got, or full pallets at least. Um, if we've got like a three-quarter pallet, we could sell that as well. Although I think I said that we would only do full pallets from here on in. But it's... No, if I said that we're only doing full pallets, then we better only do full pallets. It's, it's only right. Right. Am I going to get up this hill once again? We can only hope. Um, yeah, it, so, uh, yeah, I, I'm pretty sure I did say only full pallets from here on in rather than doing the part pallets. I mean, it does kind of make sense. You, you do take the part pallets and you put, you, know, you, you, you squash them all together and you load them all up, so... That would be something that would be done, and it's not technically our fault that the sheep pen loads the pallets um, not quite evenly. It, it sort of messes up the loading, doesn't it, with, with the sheep pen? So we'll take the strap off of there. Okay, I didn't actually expect that to fall off, but whatever. I don't, I don't really mind. Is that all? That's because these logs, I was cutting those shorter. That's why. Because some of those, I was cutting them shorter, and then I... So we got 17, 18 and a half thousand for that. It's because of those shorter logs. I should have left them longer, I think. I'm sure some of those were below 6 metres. It, it might be more than that. It might be 7 metres. If, if they go below 7 metres, it's the... Uh, you get the price drop. I can't remember now. I, I, I will have to go and look this up. But not only look it up, but also write it down on a post-it note somewhere so that I've, I've definitely got a reference to follow. Okay, back to the yard. I won't cut down any more trees this evening. We'll go back. We've been cutting trees all week this week, so we'll, we'll go back to the yard and we'll, we'll finish things up by selling a little bit of wool if we can. Um, if the price is uh, As the price is still going up, I'm just going to skip forward an hour and we'll see if the price is still going up after an hour so we go to half past six we go to new one in here there starting to get a little bit darker so next week we'll be in a brand new day we'll likely have a growth of grass that we can do something with so we'll probably be doing something with that start doing some mowing and at the same time, right, let's just slow that back down again and have a look at it. Right, 1,089. It is stabilized at 1,089. And how are we doing for pallets of wool? Let's go and have a look. What have we got? Have we got three pallets? We have got... We've got two completely full pallets. 
And then we've got that pallet there. And then these other bits, I think, would actually make a full pallet. Now, I think what you can do is you can pick up a part pallet and you can place it down. Um, you, you can sort of suspend it over the other pallet and it will load one into the other, I think. I don't actually know how well that works, though. So we, we'll have a little mess around with that and we'll see what we can find out. We've got a little bit of time, 1,089 for each pallet, so we'll we'll do quite well with that. So the first job that I will do, though, while I'm over here, is I will clean up the sheep pen. We haven't cleaned them up today, so that would be a good start. Run over this way. See, i got lots of grass over here that we could do a cleaning up. We'll lower you down like that. There we go. Wow. Okay, we've got a nice lot of grass on there. And I found out something, actually. Um, apparently, if you block the where the, the grass and that is spilt, uh, you end up losing grass overall, right? You, you still use the same amount of grass from the pen. If you were to take the grass that is spilt and you were to put it somewhere else or you would block it from spawning altogether, you would lose the same amount of grass from the pen in both scenarios. But if you pick the stuff up and you put it back into the sheep pen, it's basically it's spawning more grass in. So if you use wood chips over the spawn area for the spilt feed, like we use in um, the other FS19 series, then you actually end up losing uh, food that you actually lose feed because it generates new feed in order to be able to do that I didn't know this I didn't know that it generated new feed for it um, it's kind of a little bit disappointing to be honest because it means that if you want to maintain a clean feed area you get penalized for it quite badly right it's 251 liters in here and this is just one of the normal pallets that spawns Okay, it wasn't supposed to do that. It's a little bit difficult to manoeuvre around um, doing pallets with the keyboard steering. I'm saying it's impossible. I'm just saying it's difficult. Right, I'm going to bring that one up. And in theory, it should go into the one below it. Doesn't seem to work. Yeah, that's, that's, that's not having it so what I'm going to do instead I want to get rid of this one so we'll put that one up onto there and I would say like if we have a look in the sheep right now uh, 3,300 I'm going to gather up these part ones and we'll say we're, that we're putting them together into one because we've got three quarters of a pallet right there um, so if I take these two part pallets here and then I take the two full ones on the end. This, these two right here with the one the bit up on top. I would say that that does actually make a full pallet. These, this, this stuff right here. Wow, I forgot how heavy this is, the, these pallets. I forgot about that. They are very, very heavy, these pallets. So I'll keep that on there. I'm going to go and get our front weight and we'll put that onto the back and then we'll take these pallets over to the sell point and we'll see if we can put them down and we can sell them just like this. We tried doing this before. Well, actually, no, we tried just dropping them down using the auto load trailer and that didn't work all that successfully, did it? Bring that over a bit there. Bring you round like that. I did say that we might try and use the X-Lifters for picking these up. There we go. That's better. That stabilized me a bit now. So I can take this over and hopefully sell it. Sell these two. This makes a pallet. Like, I'm, I'm looking at these two and I'm thinking, yeah, we would put these two together. And we would make a full pallet with these two. There's 8,600. And I uh, sold the rest now. That's good. So now I can keep those two up in the air like that. Bring them back round. So I've got two more pallets that are ready to sell. We'll bring those over in a minute and we'll sell them as well. 
And then that's all of the wool that is... That's, that's all done then with the wool. We want to... Actually, I want to put these pallets in a different position. I don't like how they are at the moment. I'm going to shunt them round a little bit so that they're a little bit tidier. I kind of want to have them like that. Let me lift you up a bit. So put you in there like that. There we go. Like that. And... Move you up that way a bit. So far, I don't need to worry about it. We've, we've got the other pallets in there, so those will be loading. And then I can shunt them along a little bit when we're done. So there's 10,000 litres of wool in here. I'm going to drop that one down. Just there. And then I'll go and pick up the other one. And grab that one as well. So we've only got another half pallet. I won't sell that one because it is only a half pallet. Pick that one up there. There's another 10,000. So there's 20,000 litres of wool that we've got right there. And we've sold... That would be 30,000 litres that we've sold altogether. This is what's difficult about the keyboard steering. Is if you forget to straighten up before you do something. It's just generally you end up having problems. Right. We'll leave them as they are for a minute, and we'll try and load these on. Like this. There we go. I can sort of hook these two on like that. Um, it's not the most elegant way of carrying my uh, bales of wool, but it'll do. We've got 20,000 on there. If we can just get these over to the sell point... Without any serious issues. Let's see how much 20,000 litres gets us. Drop that right down there. $21,780. I would say that's pretty good. So we're now up to $410,000. We will need to skip the night now. So that's going to take us up to... Uh, well, take us back down to 400000 So we're waiting on fifty grand. 50 grand to go. By the morning... Oop. Yeah. That wasn't supposed to happen. <laughs> Definitely wasn't supposed to happen. By the morning, we should have roughly uh, 400,000. But we could also have some grass ready to be uh, cut by that point. So we could start making some bales. Um... And then it's a question of what we're going to do. But we've run out of time for today's episode. Just about. I will just finish putting these back, I think. And then we'll do the whole fast-forwarding time at the beginning of our next episode. Just bring you and drop you down there like that. And I'll go and get the other one. And we'll put that one in there as well. And then we can shunt them all up. And they should be all good to go. So very carefully get this one loaded. Yeah, it's it. The the pallet forks are actually rather difficult to use because you're slightly the wrong angle, and they start trying to bounce the tractor around and catapult it up into the air, and causes all sorts of difficulties. It really does. It, it generally just makes things quite the headache. So we bring you there, not too far. That's actually just right, that is. So if I can get this one to unhitch over the other side without flopping right off the end, that would be absolutely spectacular. Almost done. Almost done. Bring you in there. $410,000. So we've... I Yeah, well, 400000 by the morning. So it's either three loads of timber or a crop of grass that we want to do first. We may not quite have the crop of grass ready by the morning. I'm not quite sure yet. We'll, we'll have to see. But uh, we'll worry about that in the morning. So if you've enjoyed this episode, then please hit down below and give us a like. And if you really enjoyed it, then please tell your friends all about me. Get them to come and watch as well. That would be awesome. And until next time, thank you very much for watching. This is Frithgar. Goodbye and see you later.